In this video, we're going to use Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting to create a UI system that not only allows us to pause the game whenever we want to, but we'll also be able to see exactly how much health our player has, as well as trigger a game over screen when his health runs out. Let's begin. Shall we play a game? Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new scene. So I'm going to navigate to my scenes folder where I have level one setting. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new scene and it's right here. And I'm going to name that HUD for heads up display and I'm going to go ahead and open that up. With that now open, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the main camera. You're not going to need that. I'm going to right click on my hierarchy page here and I am going to create a UI canvas and uh, it will uh, make a big screen right there it'll be super zoomed in but if you hit the F key it should zoom out uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to rename that canvas uh, HUD or heads up display I'm going to throw it at the top here uh, one thing that you are going to need to go ahead and set on this and go ahead and set this early so you don't have any issues where it says canvas scaler over here on the right side under our uh, our new canvas named HUD we should see a uh, constant pixel size. You're going to actually scale that with screen size. You can leave that 800 uh, by 600 for now. Okay, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna import in all your sprites and find a good place to put them. I made a sprites folder and then created a UI folder and then put it right under there under menu sprites. Um, in my original player showcase that uh, I showed off at the very beginning of this build, um, I used some UI elements that I got from a website that I actually pay a subscription for, so I can't give you those. Um, but I did go ahead and make some new ones if you're interested. You're totally welcome to use these in whatever way that you choose. Um, basically, this is what it looks like. And um, you're going to have to adjust. If you use these, you're going to have to adjust the um, sprite size on this, the pixels per unit. So clicking on the game object on game over and the pause screen, they're both at 40. So go ahead and set those to 40 and then go down here and hit apply. As far as all of the health bars, uh, you're going to need to go ahead and set those to 10. I found that that gives actually the best size for the window. So once you get that set up, we'll go ahead and continue. Okay, before we set up our health system, I'm actually going to start with the uh, pause screen just because all of this is going to be kind of set in the same screen, so it doesn't really matter what order you do. So I'm going to start with the pause screen. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go to UI, and I'm going to create an image. And on that image, I am actually going to go down here to the image section of that, and I'm going to drag in my pause screen and uh, keep the source image there as paused. And uh, right down here, I'm gonna actually have to select preserve aspect. And then I'm just gonna kind of resize that a little bit and then kind of set that right in the middle of my screen. Just to keep things nice and neat, I'm going to rename that image object pause screen. And I'm going to right click that and I'm going to go to UI and create a text mesh pro button. Now, if you don't have Text Mesh Pro, basically what it is, it gives you the ability to have a little bit more flexibility with your text. If you don't have that, then go to your window, go to Package Manager, and once that loads up, you should see under this screen Text Mesh Pro. Go ahead and um, install that or update that, and uh, then you should be able to create your Text Mesh Pro button. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that button down just a little bit and I'm gonna expand the button. So if it's closed, just open it up and I'm gonna click that text object. Now that I have Text Mesh Pro installed, I can import a font into just any folder that I want. I, I made a fonts folder and I'm actually gonna use this arm wrestler font because I think it looks neat. Um, but clicking on text, um, I'm going to have to somehow get that into that button. So the way you do that is going up to your window, um, going to Text Mesh Pro, click Font Asset Creator, and uh, just grab your font, whatever you imported in, and just drop it right here and generate the font atlas, and then go ahead and hit save, and then just save it under your uh, fonts folder. Um, and if you don't have one of those, just go ahead and make one. And then you can use that font now with your button. So going to my Text Mesh Pro text unit on that text game object, I'm going to select my arm wrestler um, uh, font and it, and it will now show up inside my button. Unity actually has a pretty cool system for buttons. It's very simple. Um, on my button game object, right over here to the, to the bottom right, um, it actually has normal color, highlighted color, press color, and selected color. What I'm gonna wanna do is set up 
a color for all of those objects. And I'm gonna kinda set my first one as that color green. And then for highlighted green, um, whenever we scroll over the object, I'm gonna kinda set that a little bit brighter. And uh, with my press color, I'm gonna set that one dark. You can do whatever you want here. You can really have a lot of flexibility on the colors that you choose. And I'm gonna make it just a little bit darker to let it know, hey, you have been pressed. And my selected color, which means whenever I let off my mouse button, this is the color that it's going to stay. Uh, I'm gonna set it right there. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my text object and I'm going to change the font color. So it stands out a little bit more. I don't want it just bright white. I want it kind of like an off-white color. So maybe if I kind of move it over here towards the yellow a little bit, there we go. That'll work for me. Um, okay, so now that I have that button set, uh, I'm actually going to change the font on the text object. You can do that right here on text input. I'm gonna type in resume, because that's going to be the resume button. And I don't like the size of the font. I think it's a little bit too big. So I'm just gonna shrink that down to about 20. And uh, I'm still not happy with that color for some reason. Well, whatever, I'll just leave it white. Um, so now that I have that set, I'm going to rename this button resume button. And the reason I'm doing this is because um, we are gonna have more buttons here and I wanna be able to tell the difference between them. So just right-clicking right, -click, right -clicking that game object, I'm just gonna hit duplicate and do it one more time. And on those game objects, I'm gonna kinda just move them down just a little bit, just like that. And then the last one I'm gonna put right down here. And uh, selecting that second one, I'm gonna make that my settings button. So going into that, I can just, well, let me first rename it here, settings button. And this last one will be quit. So I'll just name that one quit button. And under my settings button, um, I'm going to change the tech to settings. And then right on the game button right down here, I'm gonna change the color of that one to kind of like a bluer color. Uh, that'll work for me. And then highlighted color, just make it a little bit brighter. And press color, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. And Select color, I will make it uh, about the same, about the same shape. Okay, same thing for the quit button. Um, selecting that one, going to the text object, gonna change that to quit. Okay, you should have something that looks like this now. That when you press start, you uh, you have these three buttons that um, not only can you highlight over them, you can press them, and they do uh, kind of change colors a little bit. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize that pause screen button just like that. And I am going to, uh, when I select the pause screen button, I'm just going to click this little check mark, kind of make it go away because we don't need to be able to see that while we're working on our health system. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to create a UI element and we're going to make that an image. And um, under my player controller, I also imported some sprites for the player health. And so now I'm going to go ahead and set that up. Um, so under that uh, image, item there i'm going to drag my health zero into that source image and uh, i'm going to preserve the aspect ratio now i'm not really happy with the size of that so um i'm going to set the size here to let's set it to two two and two and that that seems a little bit better now what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually move that game object right over let's just set it right right up there the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that uh, health bar. And um, I'm actually going to duplicate that uh, nine times or duplicate it eight times so that I have nine game objects. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, once I get that set, I'm going to go into each one of these and I'm going to change the sprite. Uh, just kind of working my way up here in sequential order. So that's uh, one. And this one is two, and this one's three. Okay, once we get those set, you should be able to like gouge out the little eye over here to the left, and you kind of get the idea of the way this is going to work. We're going to be um, setting these um, with the player's health. So um, once we get that set, you're gonna do one more thing to kind of just keep things nice and neat. Go into UI, I'm gonna create a new canvas, and I'm gonna call that canvas uh, health and then I'm just gonna drag all of these underneath uh, the health object okay go back in and re-enable your pause screen so just click that little check mark at the top there and and make sure it comes back up 
Um, under your heads up display, scroll down to the bottom and you're gonna give that a state machine and go ahead and set that to embed. So just add component state machine, set it to embed, delete everything inside, right click, create a new flow state, call it playing. Um, do it one more time, uh, right click, create flow state and call it pause. If it's not already, just right click this and toggle start on the one that's playing. Delete everything inside both of those, make a transition from playing to pause, a transition from pause back to playing. And we'll talk about those in just a second. On the interstate is the only thing that you're gonna leave in the playing um, flow machine. And what you're gonna do there is you're gonna set the time scale to one and you're going to set the pause screen um, to a uh, game object to active. The way that you do that is just set active game object and it's gonna say self. So you just grab this and you just drag it right in there and then you set that to false. So that way, whenever we enter this state, it will turn it off. Um, going back to this pause screen, you're gonna do the exact same thing in in reverse. So your time scale is getting set to zero. So if you hit the escape key or you hit pause, then it's going to freeze time and it's going to set this game object to active. Okay, let's take a look at the transitions from playing to pause. This is um, what you're gonna have set up. There's a reason why it is this way. On our keyboard input of escape, whenever we press this button down, um, it's going to check and see whether a player is dead. If our player is dead, we don't need it to do anything. If it's not dead, then we will trigger the transition. The reason we're doing that is because whenever we die, we freeze time. We don't want it to unfreeze time whenever we hit the escape button. Um, going back, we just uh, do the same thing. We can escape, we can hit the escape button, or we can click the resume button. So on button click, again, that will say self. Just uh, open up the little pause screen thing here, drag the resume button down into that and let it go and you should be set up and good to go. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need to do is go to your health game object and go ahead and add a flow machine, set it to embed, delete everything inside, and then you're gonna set this up on the inside. Um, let me, uh, while you're setting this up, just basically explain what it is this bad boy is doing. So uh, we have a list of game objects that we're going to add right here. You're just going to add in your player health bar, skipping the first one. So zero, where there are no health segments, you're going to leave that up all the time. Then we're going, what, we're, what we're doing here is we're setting our player health, which we had that set to eight, equal to eight segments of health here. So whenever uh, our player health is eight, well, then we're going to have the eight object uh, actually displaying here. So um, as the health ticks down, what it's doing is it's uh, checking the index of all of these items on the player's health uh, on that object variable. And if it is the same, well then it is setting it to active, that, that game object, uh, that uh, health bar game object setting it to active. If it is false, well then it sets it to inactive. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our level one. Before we do that, just go ahead and make sure that you save this. Just be safe. You don't want to have to redo all that work all over again. Going back to level one now, what we're going to do is we're going to create um, uh, a HUD loader. So just right click your game object there, make an empty object and call this um, HUD loader. And uh, just going to go ahead and give this a flow machine and set it to embed and uh, just delete uh, the update event. And uh, you're gonna just kind of drag this out a little bit and just call load scene. And we are going to scene uh, name and mode here and just, uh, we, I believe we call that HUD. So you're just gonna name that, whatever you name it here and just name it additive. Um, and one last thing that you're gonna need to do is going into your build settings here, just click file, go to build settings. Uh, you should see a window pop up that looks just like this. You're going to have to add um, your scenes into this object right here, just like that. Okay, there are a couple errors that it did throw up when I tried to test that, things that you're going to need to fix and things that just didn't look right. Um, first of all, um, under your health game object uh, that is set up in your heads up display scene, um, go ahead and change this from player uh, variable, so the app of player variable, for some reason it couldn't find that, and I, I just remembered I set that as a find with tag. Uh, to set that to player, the very same thing with your heads up display on your transition from playing to pause. Go ahead and set that uh, to a find with tag player. Um, on each one of your uh, health bars here, you're going to have to rec transform 
all of those to the top left of the screen. It's just going to make sure to whatever, no matter what screen size you have, it will always put it in the top left up there. The last thing is on your canvas scaler, you need to make sure that you scale that with screen size. Okay, I have a little challenge for you. Now that you know how to set up your heads up display, go ahead and set up a game over screen, which is pretty much going to be set up the same way. Give you a little clue there. Um, the big difference on this is that um, our pause screen, uh, or we just call that the game over uh, screen. Trying to give you an idea. A little cheated. I cheated a little bit there. Now you know how I did it. I just copied and pasted it. But um, on our res resume button, which we are now going to call restart button. Um, there is going to be a flow, map, flow machine on that, just set it to embed. On button click, what you're going to do is you're going to load scene level 1. And uh, for quit, you are going to, on button click, uh, on itself, application quit. And then I just do this just to let me know that whenever I click the button, it does actually do something that says, hey, it went through the application quit process and you quit. Once you have saved your game over scene, uh, go back to your level one scene and there are two things that we need to do just really quickly and then we are done. I'm um, going to build settings here, just go ahead and add game over, just drag that in to the list here and under our death state on our player macro, uh, we are actually going to go to the very end here after it sets the time scale to zero and we're just going to add a, another scene manager load scene. Uh, scene name game over just make sure it matches whatever you have that uh, named as and then you're going to set that up as additive you should now have a working heads up display that not only allows you to pause the game but displays your correct player health when you get hurt and triggers a game over screen whenever you die hopefully this has been helpful for you if not you get what you pay for my name is megahertz and i'm out